Well, good morning everyone and welcome to the latest edition of the Go Engineer Simulation webinar series. This is Arun Thiraviyam and I'm a simulation specialist with Go Engineer. Today we'll talk a little bit about simulation-driven product design and the benefits of integrating simulation into everyday activity. I'd just like to remind you that for the convenience of all of us here, your mics have been muted. So if you have any questions, please type them out in the message box of the meeting application and we'll get to them at the end of the session. Awesome. Now let's get started on understanding simulation. For starters, what is it in the context of product development? In the quest for market share, companies constantly strive to design and release new and innovative products based on rigorous market surveys. In order to stay ahead of the competition, there are a few factors that they need to take into account while designing these products. The major factor being the time to market. This is essentially the time it takes for companies to translate an idea into a fully functioning product. The quicker this process, the closer these organizations come to meeting ever-changing consumer requirement. Now remember the needs of the customer are constantly changing with the advancement of technology. So forecasting these needs and rapidly translating them into products became a pro become a priority for companies who seek to gain that competitive edge in the industry. So how do they accomplish this? How are products developed? Now traditionally, developing new products or improve the improving the existing ones is a five-step process. It all begins with an idea, a napkin sketch of a potential design. This idea is then refined and translated into a CAD model, the modern day drawing. This design, once reviewed at all levels of engineering and management, is then prototyped for testing. Now with experience, we know that this is the real bottleneck of the development process, the prototyping. The prototype needs to be manufactured and subjected to physical tests, mimicking real world conditions until it is validated for strength, durability, and other performance metrics outlined for the design. In case it fails any of these criteria, it's back to the drawing board, meaning a fresh, fresh set of designs that uh, needs to be reviewed, prototyped and validated, wherein lies the bottleneck. Not only is this a time consuming process, but the cost involved in the development process increases with the number of prototypes manufactured, or as some may like to call it, design iterations. In order, in order to avoid these expensive bottlenecks, we are proposing a concurrent product development process where engineers can essentially validate their designs as they are being refined and generated. Now, advancing the validation stage and integrating it with the design process reduces the time and cost associated with manufacturing and validating prototypes. Now, this essentially enables companies to deliver their products on time and on budget. Now, how is this accomplished? Now, in order to validate the product, there are many questions that an engineer has to answer. Now, is the product safe? Is it strong? Is it durable? And is it lightweight? Now, let's call these design parameters. In order to answer these questions and determine these design parameters, one would need multifaceted engineering expertise and a thorough knowledge of the physical system being built. Now, manual calculations of these design parameters might be a bit of a battle, especially if the product being developed is completely new, has complicated geometry, and you don't have any empirical information available to estimate these design parameters and validate them. Now, enter simulation. Now, what we're proposing is an up is a method by which we study these design parameters and performance goals of a product in a virtual environment. Now it's incorporated as a 3D tool that tests product performance and behavior that's concurrent to the design process. Now the benefit of these tools is that we only need to understand the physical conditions that the project would be subjected to during its operation to determine its ability to perform. Now it's used to test product performance and behavior virtually for a wide range of physical scenarios, starting off with structural, or predicting if a part is going to break, bend, buckle, or collapse. Moving on to motion, studying the mechanical motion of products on the application of forces of velocity or acceleration. And finally, CFT, fluid dynamics and heat flow. Now studying the response of a system to flow and thermal condition. Now if you could provide product designers a tool to test their ideas and get meaningful te technical insights while they're designing, they could run what-if type scenarios to fuel their innovation and ensure design optimization and, re and essentially reduce the cost of prototyping. Now that we understand what simulation does, let's sort of summarize the benefits of simulation-driven product design. Now we have the ability to quickly validate these design propositions, which is a primary dri driver for uh, 
product innovation. Now the cost of the prototyping is reduced merely by slashing the number of prototypes required to arrive at a robust design. Now the product performance goals are achieved to a high degree of accu accuracy. And of course, there is a reduction in the time to market, ensuring timely delivery of products and a risk-free edge over competition. Now the biggest question now would be how difficult are these tools to use? Now enter SolidWorks simulation. With the CAD CAM industry striving constantly to make traditional FEA based simulation tools easier to use and accessible to engineers and designers, SolidWorks simulation has managed to perfect this process through their CAD integrated simulation tools. Now, all simulation tools are fully embedded within the SolidWorks uh, design environment. So these designers can benefit from simulation at any stage of the development process. Now the analysis capabilities are fully integrated, sharing familiar workflows, naming conventions and, and commands. And we have simulation advisors and wizards that guide you through setting up studies step by step that simplify the entire analysis process. Now the single window integration of SOLIDWORKS simulation has benefits beyond its ease of use. Now as you modify geometry and information during design changes, the simulation studies are updated automatically, alerting you when they can when they need to be recalculated. Now you can validate your initial design and then gain an understanding of how each of these design elements affects performance. Now with the easy to use uh, 3D tools and powerful simulation capabilities, CAD, de CAD designers are benefited by being able to cover complex design issues. Now what's a good place to start? Now let's take the SOLIDWORKS simulation standard package. Now it has all the tools required to design and validate the strength of an assembly and the durability of an assembly, namely the static, fatigue analysis, motion, and the trend tracker tools. Let's help one particular engineer use these tools available in SOLIDWORKS to solve a problem now. Now essentially what we have here is a steering assembly of an N-type rally racing car now production cars are usually modified for rally racing, face uh, exponentially more severe loads on field and uh, well they require structurally stable components with high factors of safety to resist these loads. Now our goal today is to use SOLIDWORKS simulation standard to evaluate the structural strength of the steering bracket and to redesign this bracket based on this evaluation. Now the redesign could involve modifying the shape of the bracket or the bracket material. Of course, the actual strength of the redesigned component should be tested on field before the design is approved. But let's take a look at how SOLIDWORKS can reduce these expensive, uh, you know, prototyping iterations with the embedded simulation tools. Now for the bracket redesign, we've essentially reduced the steering assembly to a four component model that has the bracket, the ball joint and the knuckle casting. Now let's set some analysis goals here. Now we are to determine the strength of the steering bracket. The team has set a maximum load of 8,000 newtons on the ball joint based on uh, track conditions. And this is the load that the strength of the bracket will be tested against. Now for the next goal, let's try and reduce the weight of the assembly with the constraint that the minimum factor of safety across all the components of the assembly exceeds 1.5 or is greater than 1.5. In other words, the assembly should be able to withstand 1.5 times the maximum load before any component breaks, uh, indicating, indicating failure. Now let's quickly jump into SOLIDWORKS simulation and uh, uh, see how we can set this problem up. Once inside SOLIDWORKS, we can all recognize the familiar um, modeling window with the command manager and the and the feature manager tree with all the parts of the assembly populated. Now, like I mentioned before, the racing team would like to analyze this four component model to evaluate the strength of uh, the steering bracket on the application of a load to um, the ball joint, a classic analysis problem. Now, let's see how we can bring in the simulation environment into our CAD modeling interface. Now, in 2015, we have this nice little SOLIDWORKS add-in tab, which we can uh, used to quickly access different tools that's available to us. But traditionally, this is done with the add-ins menu in the options item on the menu bar. Now let's uh, check SOLIDWORKS simulation so we can bring in those tools. 
that would enable us to analyze this uh, design. Now switching to the simulation tab and setting up a new study immediately gives you access to the different tools that's available to essentially validate and study your design. Now since we are applying a load to the ball joint and studying the structural strength of uh, the steering bracket, this is a classic static analysis problem. Uh, looks like I've uh, created a study already there. Let's start from scratch here. We study. I'm calling it 8000 newtons considering the maximum force on the ball joint. Now as soon as we create the study, we could see a couple of changes to, to the GUI. Starting with the simulation command manager, you can see that it's populated with tools that you can use to set up uh, you know, this uh, linear, linear static study. And besides, our feature manager tree is similar to the SOLIDWORKS feature manager tree, except that it already has items populated in it. Now, what do each of these items mean? Each of these items correspond to uh, parameters that one needs to assign to completely define an analysis. Now, obviously, each of these items change with the type of analysis that we're trying to run. And primarily, since we are running a linear static analysis, it, uh, it's constrained to the type of paths, the fixtures, and the external loads that we need to apply to complete the analysis. Now, let's start uh, studying each of these items, shall we? Starting off with the paths. Now, SOLIDWORKS gives us the ability to include or exclude components from an analysis, which we won't be using now. We want to um, incorporate every element in this four-component model for the analysis, so we'll be, leave them be. What we can do here is essentially assign material properties to all the components of the analysis. Now, the racing team has sort of decided on uh, an aluminum alloy that uh, that's defined by default in the SOLIDWORKS material database considering its uh, its strength and uh, its density it's, it's uh, low weight on the application of these components now you can also quickly see that the SOLIDWORKS boasts a large material database that has uh, predefined material data that you can customize to your needs as well if if you have uh, any of those properties or if you have custom materials that you'd like to incorporate in your analysis Now, once you've assigned the material, you can see this little check mark right next to the part icons that indicates that the material has been assigned to uh, the parts you're using in your analysis. Now, let's move to the connections. Now, you can see the steering bracket isn't actually bolted on to um, the knuckle casting. By default, when you import an assembly uh, into SOLIDWORKS uh, simulation, it automatically assumes a bonded contact between touching surfaces. Now, this is a reasonable assumption to make at this early uh, design stage instead of complicating the analysis and increasing computation time with modeling in these little bolts that may not make a difference to the structural strength of the steering bracket to begin with. So we'll just leave it at the default bonded contacts. Now you can also go in and change the default bonded contact to any type of an, any, any other type of contact that's available within SOLIDWORKS, but that's a conversation for a different day. Now, once we've established the material properties of the paths and the connections, now let's fix, fi let's assign fixtures. Now, essentially, I know this knuckle casting is bolted onto the frame uh, at these locations. So, what I'm doing right now is I'm, I'm, I'm about to assign a fixed hinge at uh, each of these locations to essentially simulate uh, an equivalent condition. Now, once I've done making these fixtures, I hit this check mark, and then I move on to my load application. Now, as I mentioned before, the engineers would like the load applied at the ball joint. Now, just selecting the surface of the ball joint would uh, enable me to specify the load at that location. And I want this load to be pointing at a specific direction. Now, the benefit of another benefit of uh, using SOLIDWORKS is your ability to select features and geometry to control. Uh, I mean, as reference surfaces to control the direction of these loads and essentially assign these boundary conditions. So I'm going to use the face of the casting as uh, my uh, reference plane, and I'm going to apply a load normal to that reference plane in the opposite direction. Now meshing. We could either choose to ignore this step if you do not have too much experience with it, because SOLIDWORKS would automatically 
assign uh, element type element sizes to uh, your component well we all know it's uh, meshing is the secret sauce of uh, the finite element analysis world but let's just take a look at uh, what kind of options we have available as far as meshing goes now we have the standard curvature based mesh which is essentially your first order and your second order elements so what these allow you to do is it lets you specify a global element size now the smaller the size the greater the accuracy but the larger the computation time so let's just set a 10 millimeter global element size and mesh the model now once we are satisfied with the mesh uh, we are essentially done with our uh, analysis setup and it's time to run the simulation to look at our results. Now as soon as you complete the analysis you can see the results folder populated by a couple of uh, plots starting off with the stress plot. You can immediately see that uh, this load applied on the ball joint does not cause any catastrophic or any areas of concern as far as the stress distribution goes. In other words, the greater stress developed in the model is uh, much lower than the yield strength. Now this would make more sense if we actually had a factor of safety plot which we can access from the results folder. Now I'd want the factor of safety to be ac applied across all bodies, to be calculated across all bodies. I'm not apply assigning a multiplication factor, and I'd want a factor of I want I'd want the factor of safety distribution irrespective of uh, uh, without de defining any threshold. So you can quickly see that the minimum factor of safety is greater than our design threshold, essentially indicating that look this design is strong enough, but there is still room for improvement in terms of uh, subtracting material and you know optimizing the or rather minimizing the weight of the component. Now how do we go about this optimization process? We do have a lot of uh, degree of freedom in terms of uh, removing material. We could remove it from uh, remove material from any of these components, but we're choosing the steering bracket because that is the area of concern for uh, the racing team. Now before we start off, let's look at another tool that's underplayed in the SolidWorks simulation suite called the Trend Tracker tool. Now this is selected from the study name item on uh, your, in your simulation feature manager tree. And once it's selected, you have uh, a trend tracker item in your simulation feature manager tree. So what the trend tracker tool does is it keeps track of component, pa component parameters, such as the mass of the component, the stress developed, and the displacement of the assembly. Accessing each of these graphs will tell you the result of this analysis. So for this specific uh, design iteration, we have the mass to be at around 4.32 kilograms. And the stress developed to be around 195 uh, megapascals, which is something we saw from our result plots. Now, what is the real benefit of the design? Uh, I mean, the trend tracker tool. Now, as you keep modifying your design, the trend, track trend tracker keeps a track of each of these parameters with every design iteration. So this gives you an idea of which direction you're heading as far as your, uh, as far as how your design modifications affect your model goes. Now let me demonstrate how this is done. Now since we are looking to um, optimize optimize the design of the steering bracket, let's sort of isolate this component. And I'd like to introduce you to another tool that's underplayed in uh, the SOLIDWORKS simulation suite called the Design Insight Plot. Now what the Design Insight Plot uh, gives you is the load bearing capacity of different regions of the component. So as I move this slider closer, closer to the most loaded region, it essentially highlights all the regions that uh, bear the most load in this load application uh, with uh, the specific load applied now when i move the slider slightly away from i mean slightly towards the the most loaded section you can see that there are transparent sections or rather translucent sections that uh, indicate that these do not actually contribute to the load bearing and these are sections where uh, material can actually be removed now with this this newly found uh, design insight. Let's see how we can make that modification by 
taking advantage of uh, by taking advantage of the SolidWorks CAD modeling interface. Now, when we jump into the model tab, let's uh, outline the area that we are moving with the sketch. Let's assign a dimension here, the dimension that we'll be changing. And now that we've designed the sketch, now let's uh, remove material associated with that region from the steering bracket. Now this can be done from the assembly tab, from the assembly features item. So now with a simple extruder cut, I've managed to redefine the geometry of uh, the steering bracket and essentially proceed with my um, with the evaluation of its design. Now when I jump back into the simulation environment, usually this probably would uh, require a different analysis setup. It would uh, it would require you to redo the boundary conditions and uh, the load applications and the meshing all over again but this is the advantage of CAD embedded simulation is that you already have all those parameters set up and all you need to do is once you make these design changes is run the simulation this is because each of these uh, boundary conditions are associated with certain features and if you haven't made drastic modifications to any of these features the simulation setup is retained Ah, the trend tracker dialog box. So what this is essentially telling me is, look, you made a design change and uh, we've, we'd like to track the changes in terms of the mass, the stress developed and the displacement of the component by virtue of these design changes. Now, would you like to add that to your trend tracker? S selecting yes and uh, opening up one of the trend tracker results would immediately give you insight into how this design modification has affected your component. Now you can see the mass has gone down, well obviously, not to a substantial amount, but nevertheless it's still a decrease. As far as the stress develop goes, this actually indicates that uh, removing that sliver of material has uh, made your model somehow safer, which only gives you more room to play uh, with the model, with the redesign of the model, as far as removing the material goes. Now let's sort of push this current modification to another to the next level. Now from 10 millimeters I'm going to amp this up to 15 millimeters and I'm going to see how that affects the structural strength of my design. Jumping back to the simulation environment, rerunning my analysis, quickly have trend tracker plot the results of these analysis. Again an obvious reduction in mass and a slight increase in stress. It's still better than the baseline model and it only indicates that we, we still have uh, a lot of room for improvement. Now let's amp that up to 20. And let's jump back into our uh, simulation environment again and rerun the analysis. reduction in mass and a slight increase in stress. Now let's try and focus this redesign on another aspect of the model. Let's say um, you'd want to you'd want to change the thickness of these flanges. Let's see how, what how that affects the mass of the model and uh, the stress is developed across the model. Now that I've used the CAD interface to sort of change the thickness of this flange, let me rerun the analysis and see what my trend track says regarding the structural strength of the model. You can visibly see that the maximum stress developed in the model 
approach is yield strength I mean is closer to yield strength than uh, any of the previous iterations and this this could be evidenced by from the trend tracker results as well now although we have a more substantial decrease in mass it's accompanied by a great increase in stress although this does not approach the yield strength let's take a quick look at the factor of safety to see where we are with our design threshold ah and we quickly see that it's really close to uh, the 1.5 design threshold that we've set which essentially indicates an unacceptable design so let's go back in and change that back up to its native value Now let's jump back into the presentation and quickly summarize what we've seen. Now to summarize the redesign process, the areas that contributed least to bearing the load applied to the component were narrowed down with the design inside plot. This way any modifications to the part in terms of material removal can be directed to those areas without substantially affecting the structural integrity of the component. For instance, there were two areas where the steering brackets were modified. Modifying the base of the bracket led to a decrease in the weight of the bracket, although not substantial. It did not cause the component to fail the static load tests. But modifying the flange thickness, the areas highlighted in orange, indicated component failure. The real message here is that with the plotting tools available within SOLIDWORKS simulation, we were able to control the direction of product redesign. Now this coupled with the trend tracker tool, we were able to run what-if scenarios and derive immediate information on the strength of the product without any modifications to the you know, simulation setup. Now, if you'd like to give this analysis a shot but do not have any of the SOLIDWORKS simulation capabilities, there is a way. Now, the SOLIDWORKS CAD packages boast a set of express simulation tools that give you access to some basic structural and flow simulation capabilities. Now switching over to the Evaluate tab gives you access to these tools. Now activating these tools launches simulation advisors that walk you through setting up an FEA based simulation that serves uh, two purposes. One, um, it's an uh, easily accessible first pass tool that engineers can use to evaluate product design at part levels. And two, it's a great way for engineers who have no prior experience with FEA to understand nuances of creating a simulation and interpreting results to accelerate you know, the product design process. Of course, there are a few limitations to the advisor's capabilities. Like I mentioned before, you can run these simulation tasks on paths. In case you wanted to run this particular analysis, you will have to model the assembly as a single homogeneous component. Users are also limited in the types of loads they can apply and the result plots that they can derive from the analysis. Now that we've tested the product for its strength, what about its durability? Now taking the case of the steering assembly again, we've established the effect of various redesigns on the strength of the steering bracket for a cycle of loading. But you'd expect these rally races to run for multiple laps and multiple races, which would imply that the steering bracket would undergo multiple loading cycles. Now with SN curve information of the material used in the assembly, it is possible to set up a fatigue analysis that tests the durability of the component for a set number of loading cycles. Now let's jump back into SOLIDWORKS simulation and see how we can set up such a durability analysis. Before that, let's clean up the trend tracker tool. I apologize, I accidentally deleted the study, but it's going to take me a couple of seconds to just rerun the study. Apply material properties, component contacts, fixed hinges on uh, the bolt locations. An external load on the ball joint. And I've run the analysis. 
this just goes to so show that once you have a knack of where each of these items are, it's really easy and simple to set up. There is no real battle with any of the options you use for uh, setting up a simple analysis. Now let's go back to our uh, to setting up a new study. Now that we've run a linear static study we, that accounts for one cycle of loading, let's use the fatigue tool to look at uh, how a million how the strength of the component would fare versus a million cycles. Now the fatigue analysis tool is, is really simple to set up. It has a it has very limited items on the simulation feature manager tree, starting with the loading. Now the fatigue tool is an event-based uh, loading analysis tool, as in any of the fatigue loading is based on all the static structural loading you have set up prior to the fatigue analysis. So if you had three different static analyses, you can add them as different events and SOLIDWORKS intelligently applies a combination of these loads for a specified number of cycles. Now since we have just one static loading, we just automatic, it, it is just automatically added to the fatigue study. Now let's see how this, the component would fare versus a million cycles of uh, the 8000 Newton load on the ball joint. Now once I specified the event I'll be an analyzing, your uh, Simulation feature manager tree is updated with the parts list corresponding to that specific event and the material properties as well. Now let's take a look at what kind of material properties we need to actually run the analysis. Now as I said before, an SN curve is really important for a fatigue analysis. You need to understand how, uh, by experiments, how a material essentially deforms or um, or the stresses developed on the material for various cycles of loading, something we like to call the SN curve. Now so SOLIDWORKS has materials with uh, SN curves defined. Now if you'd want to go ahead and edit those materials and add your own SN curve, that is a possibility as well. You can, you have uh, the ability to set up to nine curves. Now let's just keep the native SN curve definition of SOLIDWORKS. Another thing you can change is the interpolation of the various data you have, uh, various data points you have in the SN curve. Let's just keep that as a default. Now as soon as I've entered my material properties and my loading event, all I need to do is run the analysis. You can you can see how quickly SOLIDWORKS gives you a couple of results that is going to essentially sh show you the, the durability of the component. Let me bring up my life plot here. So what the life plot is telling me is that uh, while the rest of the component for the current loading condition can take up to 40 million cycles there are areas of the component that might fail close to 2 million cycles so although the steering bracket would uh, you know would last for uh, a million cycles well beyond beyond that based on warranty constraints the the team needs to take a call on whether to replace the component or how many more laps they can actually drive the steering bracket towards before they actually go about the replacement. They could also make informed design decisions on the kind of materials they can use and the properties they can change up to actually push this durability and really take a chance at using the steering steering bracket bracket at a lot uh, for a lot more for a lot more races. Now let's summarize a little exercise here. Now we've used tools available in SOLIDWORKS simulation standard to answer a few questions essential to a successful product design. Now will a product fail? This hits on the strength of the product. Now how will it fail? And when will it fail? This questions the durability of the product to multiple loading cycles. Now from the simulation standard package, the linear, static, fatigue and the trend tracker tools were used to answer these questions. But what about the time-based motion tool? Although we haven't used the time-based motion tool, it is generally used for studying the mechanical motion of, the, of components of an assembly on the application of a force, velocity, and acceleration inputs to one of the components. Now with respect to our steering assembly study, it can be used to answer, answer questions such as what is the maximum range of motion of the steering assembly, what are the reaction forces that are developed in the various joints during this motion, and what is the path traced by the tie rod and so on. Finally, how do we get our hands on this great tool? Now enter Go Engineer. 
Now, for all your simulation needs and product development assistance, now Go Engineer is a provider of uh, the most compelling design platforms in the industry, deploying engineering software and 3D printing technology to make the design process innovative, efficient, and intelligent. Now, with over 25 years of experience in the design industry, we bring best practice methodology from high tech, medical, consumer goods, machine design, automotive, aerospace, and energy industries to all of our customers. Now, we have about 20 training centers dedicated to educate customers on SOLIDWORKS and simulation with highly trained specialists as myself in each of these areas to assist in, the, in, in incorporating these tools in your design workflow. Finally, I'd like to conclude this uh, webinar by showing you the simulation, SOLIDWORKS simulation portfolio that boasts the variety of tools we have to address different um, product design problems that uh, one might face during a product design process. Now, what we looked at today was just a simulation standard package, a sliver of the actual, actual um, capabilities of SOLIDWORKS simulation. Now, you see my contact address, I mean my email address in the bottom left corner of the screen. I'd appreciate it if you hit me up if, with any questions and I'd be happy to get back to you with them.